It's the last episode of Tech Tuesday of 2009, and of course I have to end it with the best gadgets of the year. I was going to attempt the best gadgets of the decade, but the sheer amount of tech to sort through from the last 10 years would have surely made me never want to see technology again. Number 5. The Flip Ultra HD makes the random video addiction of this year easier than ever. Flip cameras have been the easiest and best pocket cams available for the last few years, and the Ultra HD overshot this with higher storage and HD video. For under 200 bucks, you can now get a camera that takes up less space than a digital camera and offers hour of video recording with easy uploads to YouTube. Since why else would you take random video? Number four. Many forgot the importance of having nice earbuds to keep up with your $200 iPod or Zoom. But most times, expect to drop just as much for a great set of headphones. The Eclipsius S4 and S4i's change this by offering amazing sound quality for only $80. The same price as those Apple in-ears that are not much more special than the package in buds. On par with the buds that can run around $150, the S4s won't make you regret not spending the extra cash. For those with an iPod Shuffle or other iPods that support the headphone mic, the S4i's come with the otherwise Apple exclusive clicker built in. Now if only I had an iPod to go along with these. I would get them. Number three, the iPhone 3GS voted to the top five by all of my viewers. Well, more like Cody Thompson, but he counts for at least two votes. It offered the power needed to handle the increasing complexity of apps like new games and video streaming while upgrading the camera and interface with a 3.0 software. The 3.0 software really added the stuff that users have been waiting for since iPhone 1, and with a new speed, all was happy in the world of Apple, except the service provider, but that's no surprise. Number two, can I really bring myself to say it? Windows 7. For being a child of necessity to make up for Vista, Windows 7 really pulled off usability at a surprisingly good level. 7 fixed all those glitches and bugs that made Vista infamous and even added some new stuff to ease interface and organization. As I said in my original review, it just works. And at this point in Microsoft's life, with the failing hardware of the Xbox, the lack of support for Windows-based phones and phone OS's, Bing being nothing and the Zune showing up too late for the party, and Vista's utter failure, Windows 7 almost makes up for about one third of that. Almost. And number one, the 27 inch i7 powered iMac really came from nowhere as a major competitor to larger desktop rigs, like the Pro. With serious power inside and a giant display in great form on the outside, there is nothing not to like about the iMac. It used to be almost a requirement for higher level graphic and video guys to go for a huge Mac Pro, which is also a huge investment. Now with the top iMac, an otherwise small time designer can get a great machine without selling any organs. And the last thing you want to do when heading off to college is be selling any organs. Well, I talked about it, put it on, never well that's all for this year. I am currently let down by the amount of traffic on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash tech Tuesday. So check it out please. I return after winter break with all of my normally scheduled tech news and sarcasm.